Nancy. Hey. hey. Can't see you. Let me see. Uh, I can see your name here. I'm, I'm turning on my video. Can you see me? I can see you now. Okay. Awesome. Let's see. Might not be able to see me. This is a different, this isn't Zoom, right? This is something else. No, this is Zoom. Oh, okay. Huh. Does it I'm look on my iPad instead of my computer, so I might not know. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I can't. Ah, uh, here we go. There. There you are. Hi. Hi. Nancy, are you still in Mexico? I am. Nice. And yep. when do you return? Uh, on the 8th of April. Oh. Okay. Yep. So it's getting close. Uh, getting close. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to make tonight, but here I am. I haven't been able to bring up the agenda, but um, I saw Tim's note and stuff. But anyway, it's probably too much for my iPad. I'll just follow along. <laughs> I did I, read, I did read the, the bid and it sounded like that was the only thing we needed to vote on, maybe. For the survey? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I read I got your invitation to Joel's going away party. I'm so sad he's gone. I am too, Nancy. It's weird not having him on the team anymore. We've been he doing some interviews. Uh, yeah, but no one like Dole. No, he was so great. I mean, he really he got a lot done while he was here, and he was just super cooperative and knew, knew a ton of stuff and people right. and yeah where did he go so he went to the city of castle pines which is the first suburb above castle rock i think that's uh -huh. i think i uh -huh. have that right yeah yeah i know where it is i can't believe it's a city now i remember when it was just like a i don't know out there kind of suburb in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah now, Aww. Judy, Judy, can you hear me? Okay, Judy, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, you are perfect, and you're also sharing your screen. Right, but I don't, I don't know how to get it bigger. It's all in the corner. <laughs> um, let's see. So I'm gonna stop your screen sharing. Try the three dots at the top, Judy, that maybe if you have three dots at the top, it says no, no. Well, it's big now, but now, yeah, I can see all of you big, large now. Okay. Oh, boy. I'm only seeing the person who speaks at a time. Let's see. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's Hi, Judith. Judith. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> Hello. And Tim. It is I. Huh. <laughs> hey, nice to see you, Judith. You're muted. Nice to be seen. I, I am sorry that uh, last month was, uh, I couldn't get in, so. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. But I read yeah, we, we managed to have a uh, uh, a full meeting and uh, by people, so we got some work done anyway. But yeah, let's see. I'm video must be off. Yeah. And and I'm I apologize. My dog just thinks that he is a member of OSAC. So yeah, well, we'll <laughs> we'll. we'll <laughs> We'll, promote. we'll let him in. What's, hey, what's yeah. your dog's name, Judith? His name is Blue. This is Aww. Blue. Hi, Blue. <laughs> oh, he's so sweet. He can be. <laughs> he loves Zoom meetings. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, you guys sit. If necessary, we'll promote him to full member. There you go. Well, he could be an alternate <laughs> until we get two alternates, right? <laughs> Hi, Matthew. Tim Beeson here. 
Hello, Matthew. <laughs> nice to meet you. I think we've met before. Yeah. Hi, Matthew. I don't think I've met you. I'm Nancy Wilson. Um, I'm Judy. Judith. Hi. And Matthew, what do you do for the city? Oh, I am the city arborist and horticulturalist and the snow uh, shoveler and other duties as a sign. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you were doing a week ago. Just hanging out, drinking coffee at the shop. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Is all the snow gone? Now. Is all the snow gone? Yes. Because it, it's up and divide, they had six inches. I guess it's safe to come back. Wow. <laughs> Hope it isn't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't count on it. It could be. A, we had, certainly had a cold snap here today. Good grief. Mm. Was it something like 15 degrees when I went outside? Well, we don't have a lot to do tonight, which is why I took the opportunity to repeat the uh, the documents we sent out last week, just so uh, people could catch up if they weren't here this week. I know people were just chomping at the bit to do that. So, Might not have a quorum at this rate. Well, I hope we do. That would be a shame. See, it's six o'clock. We have no choice. We'll give people time. <laughs> we just need one more. All right, I just let Robin in. Oh, good. Okay. Don't we need two more? Don't we need five? We just need a. Um, we just need four of seven. Oh, okay. For a quorum. Hey, there we go. All right, we're we're growing. This is great. We'll give it a couple, maybe another minute. And See if anybody else joins us. Um, hi, TJ. Where have you been hiding out lately? Uh, I've been stuck at the uh, National Science Teachers Association conference up in Denver last week. So that was the. I know how much you love meetings. So that must have been a joy. I, I yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I've got my burrito and I'm ready to go. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> well, like I was saying, this will probably be a short one. We, we Fingers didn't... crossed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see if I can drag it on for you, okay? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, you're just winning me over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, we'll welcome people in as they come. Uh, just a moment, let me get... So, just a moment. That's not right. I just had the February agenda up. Here we go. Okay, um, the March 25th, 2024 uh, OSAC monthly meeting is now called to order. We have two openings for alternates. And as usual, the first thing is approval of minutes. Does anybody have anything to say oh, about the minutes? I've got a couple of things. Um, they're not really profound. Shoot, I lost my uh, I lost my documents here. Just a second.
Okay, so um, with regard to the minutes, I just had a couple of comments um, on item E, old business, uh, item two, create and execute a plan for Fields Park. There was a statement in their uh, review planning survey and to discuss possibilities uh, based on survey. I, I wanted to change that to discuss planning department survey and discuss staking the lot and the easement on the east side of the lot, just something a little bit more specific. And then uh, on item three in old business, I there was a statement, um, there is a disagreement on how to proceed. And I wanted to change that to both Remfi and City Arborist need to inspect uh, Bill Bauer Trail property together to determine the extent of the removal of brush and deadwood. Um, that's it. <clears throat> Somebody move to accept those changes. Can I move to um, approve the last month's uh, uh, meeting with the proposed changes? Well done. Anybody <laughs> second? I second. Okay, we have approved the uh, minutes from last month. By the way, I didn't do the... Uh, um, the attendance here. Uh, I'm Tim Beeson. Uh, we have Nancy Wilson, Judith Karnak, uh, Judy Chandler, um, the reverse. <laughs> Matthew Nelson, mm -hmm. Robin Kovac, and Anthony Maltese. Oh, I'm and here. Klein. Welcome. Okay, Thank so you. Uh, we've got a pretty full house. That's great. Um, and Julian is here. And Julian, I'm sorry. Um, thank you. I probably should have done that in order of members and whatever, but it's okay. All right. Uh, so, hmm. I do. Okay. Um, agenda review and uh, public comment on non agenda items. The only thing in here was my chairperson's comments on the agenda package of saying that most of what was in there was just a repeat from last week in order to, to bring other people up to speed. Um, hope everybody saw that and didn't and just reviewed those things so they didn't waste their time too much. Uh, any uh, Anybody waiting in the wings to make comments? Um, nope. Oh, okay. Um, we'll go on. The uh, uh, reports are the the November, December, and January uh, pair of reports. Uh, did anybody have some comments on those? Wasn't it? No, I didn't either. So we'll go on to old business. Um, and this is mostly just status updates and, and then the survey uh, proposal. First of all, the Creek Walk Phase 6. Uh, Judy, Nancy, do you have any comments on that? Well, Tim, can I interject really quick? Um, I do. I do have the Parks and Rec Director's Report update on here. Am I seeing the agenda wrong? It's under reports under PARIB. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it looked like... Uh, yeah, I have not seen that, so. Oh, that's okay. I didn't submit one. Uh, so I oh, wanted okay. to, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to take this opportunity to seed my report to Matthew Nelson, our city arborist, who has uh, a fun idea to share with OSAC this evening. So Matthew, I'm going to uh, give the floor to you for this update, okay? Oh, great. Perfect. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Excellent. So uh, Jillian did ask me uh, to give you all just kind of general report on Zero Becker's Lane. And then we had an idea uh, for what we could do with the property. So we want to give that to you all for your uh, information and gratification. Uh, so the trees at Zero Becker's Lane, uh, the stream corridor is dominated by mature willows, just kind of like most of the Fountain Creek corridor. 
uh, as we look at the improvement and maintenance of, the, maintenance of this property, we're going to remove the large deadwood hanging branches and do some structural pruning on those trees. Pretty standard for trees that come into our care. Uh, the flat portion of the property is dominated by Siberian elms. Um, some might require removal. Some of them are in pretty rough shape. And if they are removed, then we'll have to replace them with another tree either on the property or elsewhere. And then the remaining trees on the property, uh, we're going to go through and remove deadwood, hanging broken, structural pruning, kind of the regular gambit of what we do to care for our trees. And the understory, uh, there's a fair bit of weeds and less desirable species, so we need to start to culture the property towards uh, a composition that we think will serve us better. So as far as the timeline for the, uh, the general tidying up and improvement of that property, uh, it was going to be uh, shortly, but then every tree in town broke because of the snow. So we probably got pushed back a little bit on that, but we're still thinking spring 2024. We should be able to get to that in the next couple of months. Uh, it's not an area of high occupancy, so we don't have as much of a finite timeline as like a broken branch over a road or in a park or something like that. So we'll organize our work based uh, on threat to life and property. And it's probably going to be three to five days of work to get the property all tidied up. So um, recently, we've been thinking about the disc golf course at Fields Park, which is a six hole, uh, six basket course. And we had the bright idea that perhaps this new property could be an opportunity to put in a couple more holes and improve it into a full nine hole disc golf course. Um, so that's just something we wanted to bring to, uh, to you all for your thoughts and uh, feelings. Uh, I've been talking with some of the local disc golf community folks and they are excited about the prospect of Fields Park and perhaps this property being improved into a, pro a proper nine hole course. And they could probably rally up a bunch of resources to help us tidy up this property, install our infrastructure at the Zero Beckers Lane and on the Fields Park property. Uh, they've done that all over Colorado Springs. So as far as what we would do with the property to get it to where we could play it for disc golf, um, I'm gonna share my screen now. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of our general thoughts. Again, we're just bringing it to you all to see what you have to think about it. We could do kind of three shorter holes um, and then tie that together with the stuff at Fields Park to um, turn it into a nine hole disc golf course. So we just want to see what y'all thought about it and uh, before we proceed further. And so I'm here for questions, concerns, comments. Um, hey, Matthew. Full disclosure, I love disc golf. Um, so that's part of why I'm looking uh, at this process. Hey, Matthew, we can only yes. see half of the PDF with the oh, map no, on it. There we go. That? Is that better? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I didn't know what was displaying for you or for me, but anyways, that's kind of the three holes that would fit on that parcel. Again, just I thought we had something I've kind of had in the back of my mind for a while, but it is your property and we're going to improve it either way, but this is an idea we had um, for what we could do with it. So okay. that's all I have. Um, we have a competing use. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to come to agreement on that. We have uh, Judy, you want to go ahead and talk about that a little bit? Sure. So um, Tim has been trying valiantly to get up and get an appointment set with uh, the people from the Independence Center. And <clears throat> the gentleman that we're supposed to be working with is in a wheelchair. And somehow, every time they make an appointment, it sleets or snows, or there's a ton of snow on the ground. So what? this is the third try, I think, isn't it, Tim? Next yeah, time. something yeah. like that. The, the, the point is that uh, we were looking at this as an ADA um, accessible area. Yeah. Um, which kind of butts heads with a a frisbee, uh, disc golf course. So I'm not I'm not saying no on that. I'm just one person. Um, but uh, we have looked at that, and and I I thought the ADA idea was a good idea. I think this is a good idea too. But I would like to hear from the rest of the the rest of the members. I question. I guess couldn't they be compatible? 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing this just like you are, and I'm not sure that that's that they could be or they couldn't be. Uh -huh. we, because we the, the disc that, golf courses, maybe, maybe um, you could tell us what the uh, what would have to happen in order to clear these three holes. Um, disc golfers walk through tall grass and and various obstacles. Uh, don't they? I guess that's a question for Greg. Greg, you mean Matthew? I mean, sorry, Matthew. No, that's okay. So yeah, as far as improving the property for disc golf, we're just looking at three baskets, and which like you see in fields and other places, and three tee pads. They don't have to be anything fancy, just a fat place, uh, purpose place to throw from. So we wouldn't have to do any extensive removal or vegetation management other than what we have to do already just to tidy the property up. Uh-huh. And how do you propose to pass back to cross Becker's Lane? With the course? There's a crosswalk there in between the kind of the school property and the skate park parking lots. There's already a crosswalk there. Uh-huh. So the, the golfers would just walk over and cross there and continue. Yes. Uh -huh. And then they could continue to play through Fields Park if y'all wanted to proceed with this uh, uh -huh. idea. Um, I'm wondering, okay, the, uh, the ADA stuff, I think, I haven't seen the paperwork on this, but my what I gather is, and Judy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that there's some pretty significant requirements that go into creating an area that's ADA compatible. And I'm not, I don't know that they would have, they might have restrictions on how it could be used. I don't know that, but uh, we're supposed to meet with uh, Paul Pot from the Independent Center on Friday. This will be the, what, the third one, Judy? Third attempt. Um, to meet there. Obviously, he's in a wheelchair. We can't have a mucky, muddy uh, area to meet on. But this this really has been set up for, you know, a month now. And yeah, we have competing uses for the property. And I would uh, like to hear more from, from our members. And maybe one thing we need is is to go ahead and meet with uh, Paul mm -hmm. over there and find out what his requirements are. If the idea of a uh, of a frisbee golf course on the same property that was ADA compatible uh, would work out, it might be no problem at all. I don't know, but uh, I think we need to talk to Paul, um, see what his thoughts are. I know who he, he was excited about having some creek access um for, for for wheelchair people for ada people um and hopefully we can do both uh, anybody else want to make some comments here over here tim yeah um yeah i really really would need some serious uh convincing that the ada access would preclude the use of this for disc golf i come in full disclosure i can't come in from the ultimate frisbee side of things and not the disc golf <laughs> side of things but um i am pretty familiar with the uses of the use of disc golf and and the courses in like lawrence kansas and other places and i i think that we should come at this more of a see if we can get both of these things to work rather than putting one over the other um so that's just my my um thing because yeah getting the creek access down there is going to be important having ada access is important too but there's from what i've seen in in, in playing disc golf in the in the past um there's very little infrastructure or anything that's going to be in the way and with the amount of use that i've seen happen on a lot of these things i don't think there's going to be too much of a hazard to uh passerby so i think the biggest hazard is just going to be somebody losing their disc in the creek Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is Nancy. I I would totally agree with what uh, TJ just said, and it might be worthwhile um, after your visit with the fellow from the Independence Center to talk to um, Colorado Springs Parks. They have several ADA areas that that are right alongside other things. I'm thinking about um, 
uh, the fishing platforms that are at, um, oh, not Monument Park, but the lake. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but I see people on that trail around the around the lake and the platforms for fishing that have that are ADA except accessible and stuff so I so that and and one of them is actually right next to a playground so I think um as TJ said I think it's really p possible to make these compatible yeah, probably needs good. yeah probably yeah. needs to be some signage um for people just to let them know that there could be um you know frisbee golfers uh, playing through but I think frisbee golfers are usually pretty considerate of people in their field well, they're hellions. <laughs> no, well, that'd be great. That would be wonderful if we could if we could do both. So uh, um, we'll get some more information on uh, on the ADA stuff, and I'll talk this over, or we'll, Judy and I'll talk this over with uh, Paul, and hopefully uh, it, it's compatible. Uh, doesn't doesn't seem like it wouldn't be. So that'd be great. Okay, thanks, Matthew. No worries, just another bright idea. No, no, that's great. That's good. Good for so, well. Okay, we're on to the Fields Park. Let, let's go back and do the uh, creek walk, um, just to make sure there's. I don't think we have anything going on to report since we lost um, um, our uh, city engineer. We do have a replacement for him, John Chavez, our temporary replacement for him, but. He certainly isn't up to speed on all of this, I'm sure. Um, so what do we have to say here? Uh, I, I have something that might be yeah, interesting Judy. to everyone. Um, <clears throat> so this had nothing to do with OSAC, but I got a little frustrated because as you well know, Rainbow Falls has been closed for years. And um, I have a lot of heart in Rainbow Falls because, of course, I'm part of the five that got Rainbow Falls away from the mining company and into the hands of the park, El Paso County Parks. So <clears throat> I decided it was time to find out what really is happening over there. And um, when I finally got a hold of Teresa O'Dell, I thought I fo I'd found out something that this would really help this committee to see where things are going on the section six. The reason Rainbow Falls is closed, well, is given ostensibly as falling rocks, which really did happen and happens often there. And so they were cleaning up, but then they discovered they had a much larger problem, which is the lack of, sorry, I'm just getting over bronchitis, so I have to keep clearing my throat, but um, it's the lack of um, access for people, unless you either find a place somewhere in that west end of Manitou and Park and walk up, or you find something at Higginbotham Flats and walk down. And it's, as you all know, the road has basically no shoulders and it doesn't, it's very bad because the interesting thing is that really just with word of mouth, um, Rainbow Falls has become very popular. It's been extraordinary. But they are not gonna open Rainbow Falls until they come up with a solution to the parking issues and the traffic issue, human traffic. And that's where I thought you would be interested because it would seem to me that the whale tail property is the access to also possibly a solution for El Paso County Parks and Rainbow Falls for parking. The El Paso County Parks is currently in negotiations with the city, and I guess the city just returned their paperwork with Manitou, and this is their plan. Their plan is to park, have people park up at the top uh, in the lot the gentleman from Manitou bought, and you will be charged one fee, and you can, you will, they don't want anybody walking down Serpentine Drive or up. And you will that it will include a trip on some kind of uh, I don't know what they what do they call that place oh adventures out out west you know those mm -hmm. little cheapy things with I think they seat six 
you'll get yeah. right down to the Rainbow Falls. Then the units, the whatever they are, the vehicles will come down to the bottom of Serpentine Drive and there'll be a roundabout there and they will just come around and go back up and keep doing that all day as long as the park is open. So there won't be any parking at Rainbow Falls. And I don't know. And, and excuse me, this is uh, El Paso County's plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there won't be any parking, but I didn't ask, just occurred to me whether um, they're going to have handicap parking down there just to save these people getting in and out of these GP things. But yeah, okay. regardless, this is definitely one part of these, fee, which yeah. will cover the guy's charge for parking and will cover something to, you know, obviously compensate um, <clears throat> adventures out west until they can come up with a better plan. That is what they're hoping. And they're actually hoping to open possibly by the end of May with this plan. But this is not the solution. This is just an interim gap to get Rainbow Falls up and running again. And I was wondering if we could, in our talking about section six, um, phase six, excuse me, also considered, and we had talked about this when we got the property, but actually looking harder at it and maybe a link above it so that we could connect the parking lot to the bridge area of Rainbow Falls. And then you could just go over the bridge and you'd be at Rainbow Falls. And again, I just, that was the conversation we had. It was longer than that, but that's basically what it boils down to. Is, okay, hold on, hold on a second. The parking yeah. lot is connected to Rainbow Falls. And you walk through the parking lot and you're at Rainbow Falls. No, there's not going to be any parking there. Why in the world wouldn't there be parking there? Because they have, I guess, because people keep driving down and hoping they're going to get a space or driving up and hoping, but there won't be any. <laughs> so they can just say, and I said, how are you going to do that? You know, these are, there's sure, of course, there's locals, but there's also tourists. They don't read the bulletin and they don't read the Gazette and they don't watch local TV. How is it? But she didn't, she just said, well, we're going to do it through social media. And I this said, just doesn't sound like an. Well, I'm just I'm just relaying information problem, because yeah. I think I I see some more importance on the whale fish property um, in terms of what we could possibly help with in this solution because it isn't solved. There, you know, it's well, there is no parking on the whale tail property. No, 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 no. Yeah. That would be the trail. If we could get a trail, right? right. Well, we're going to build the trail. Top. Yeah, sure. We're parking up top. A trail down where it comes up again okay. and, he, and she said when i talked to her i said well what about that property she said well it's pretty close to the bridge they could walk right across i said oh. okay let's hold on for just a second this mm -hmm. is a problem for our engineering department um we're not going to solve this problem well uh, i, we I totally we, get it <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're not going to problem solve this problem we can help to solve it Right. Um, right now, there is no uh, plan in in uh, phase six right. to put a trail from uh, the the Rainbow Falls up to Higginbotham Flats. So that would be something that we could be involved in, but that's a uh, fairly significant change to uh, to the to the plans for uh, phase six. One that I, I would support, but um, it's costly. Mm -hmm. uh, it costs a lot of money to build uh, trails along a roadway like that. It's a lot of engineering that goes into it. We'll be doing that engineering anyway, um, for the most part, but it would take a chunk of change to extend that trail on up to Higginbotham Flats. We do have the property up there to do that with. Um, yeah, I'd have to look at the map again, but we do have property up there to do that with. So that's a great suggestion, and I, I think we need to get in front of uh, the planning department to see how they want to move with that. Plus, I can't imagine that parking in the parking lot down there is an insolvable problem. Um, <laughs> it, it's been, a parking I mean, I lot. I, I, we do go down there at all t hours and often because I'm just vested up in Rainbow Falls. Yeah, okay. yeah. 
and I want to see what's going on. And it's incredibly surprising what people do and how they park just to get into the falls. I'm the always amazed by that and how happy they are. I don't know if it's because it's really the only place we can go tell your kids in the area to go stand under a waterfall. I don't know what it's yeah. about. The tours are great. I will say the that. only beach in town. Yeah, right. Well, it doesn't <laughs> have any sand. But Jillian, what do you think about all this? Yeah. Um, I know that Danu from Parib has been wanting to get on the OSAC agenda to talk about that exact scenario, building yeah. um extending the creek walk trail to Higginbotham Flats using the whale the whale tail property. I'm not sure what else we're calling it at this point. There's a, couple uh, so other, there's a couple other lots we can use up there as well, up higher. Um, Go ahead. So I know that that would be supported by Parib, and I think they would love to work with OSAC on that. Sure. Um, but as far as the, the shuttle to Rainbow Falls, that's completely in our parking and mobility department. So I'm not in the loop with that right now. Yeah, um, I know I know that uh, uh, Greg would love to do that. Ah. have a cash cow going down to Rainbow Falls and that, and that might be the solution um nothing against Greg he's he's a businessman and and trying to monetize his property up there um well this is all interesting uh I don't think we're prepared to go much further than this but uh I would certainly think we ought to bring that up to the mobile mobility department and to the planning department to see you know right now is a tough time to be adding or subtracting anything from phase six um we lost our our brain trust so um can what do you think should we set up a, a meeting around this jillian should jillian set up a meeting around this <laughs> a me oh wait a meeting with who with who I with the planning department and uh mobility or just start meeting with the planning department or mobility to see if what ideas they have planning department mobility parab and osac and just brainstorm what we could possibly do so I will say our new planning director, Fred, is starting this Friday. Oh, okay. Uh, so maybe now's a great time to introduce him to phase six of the Creek Walk project and, and bring this up. But I, it would be nice to give him a week or two to settle in, <laughs> maybe. I give him a week. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, he's walking into a lot. So I'm happy to help set up a meeting, but okay. I, I do think we should let him get settled okay. a little bit. I'll, I'll, uh, Put this on my on my incredibly tight schedule to give you a call and work with you to set this up. And so, in the meantime, though, would it, would it be a smart idea to see if we can get Danu to attend the next OSAC meeting? Here we go. Oh, sure, sure, that'll be fine. Well, let's let's talk with Danu and uh, we'll stir this up and see what we we might be able to who, do. Who is Let's? Just asking. Pardon else. me. I'm trying to figure out when you say let's, I don't want to just let it go flitter away. If we want or we need to ask her early. Well, it'll be OSAC, uh, Parab, planning, and... Uh, oh, I mean, just to, for her to do a uh, presentation for us, for OSAC, so we can see where they're at. about. Sure, I'll, I'll contact uh, Danu and do that. Yeah, can, I, can I just comment? Um, I know way back when, when conversations were being had about the Higginbotham flats becoming a park and um, working on a master plan that there was conversation about tying tying the, the park plan into access to Seven Falls for the major purpose of funding because um, I there isn't funding currently but I, I, I heard GOCO grant mentioned a number of times and the thought at that conversation which is was a while ago um was um that if we tied that together there might be a uh, funding for for us to 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 sneak that access into seven falls so i think it's certainly a good conversation to have with regards to funding as well 
I'm confused. Are you saying Seven Falls, the broad one? I think she misspoke. She I'm misspoke. sorry. Did I say? Yeah, you did. Sorry. I'm sorry. Rainbow Falls. Long way to go. That's a um, so, so I just I know that Rainbow Falls was part of that discussion access in in a funding package, especially if if uh, sure. if a, like a GoCo grant was was being sought. Right. So it's and been I'm... discussed. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah, it's. Um... Judith is absolutely right. It has been discussed. And uh, I've had kind of several conversations in the, in the past with Danu about it. Um, they just weren't quite ready um, to come up with a plan. But I just want to make sure that we understand that phase six of the Creekwalk Trail plan, at that R RFP has been let. That, that, this would not be part of phase six. This would be part of our own trail connection to um, the Creek Walk Trail uh, in collaboration with, with Parab and that kind of thing. But yeah, um, the, the Creek Walk six, phase six will move ahead um, while we're figuring the rest of this out. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a great idea to have a trail going from uh, Rainbow Falls up to uh, Higginbach Flats. Uh, it's kind of a, logistical issue because of the way that that uh, greg's uh, property is laid out up there but yep well and we when we looked at it just on our property it still would be very steep it would probably require some switchbacks mm -hmm. um it, it would be a pretty technical trail to build mm -hmm. and um and with high traffic and tourist traffic you know it could be as judith said probably a candidate for um Go coat because it would take some significant funds to put right. in a trail down that mountain. <laughs> okay, well, this is uh, something to start working on now for a year or two years in the future. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Judith. Judy, sorry. Very confusing. <laughs> um. Okay, so. Uh, anything else on uh, phase six of Creekwalk? Okay, we'll move on then. Um, Nancy, I just realized you're going to be back in time for the first meeting at the rate things are going. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized winter is gone, kiddo. Yeah. Okay, Field, Fields Park. Um, let's move on to that. Uh, the first thing on that, the first thing on that list is the uh, uh, property survey. And thanks to um, Jillian's contacts in planning, we have a, a let me go over to, uh, they're getting strange here. Okay, um, so if we go down to, I think it's page 20. Let me see. I think it's page. Uh, page 20. No, it's page. Uh, um, 22. Okay. Yeah, uh, I kind of skipped one thing. I, I just wanted to mention the, uh, we'll come back to this task list. That'll make sense. But yeah, if we go down to the page 22 and we've got the uh, the survey there that we talked about last time, I won't go into detail on that. But the point is that we now have a proposal. Um, get that here. And I will share that. I'm sorry, I'm looking for this. Get and the Fields Park Record. Sorry, just a moment. Here 
Here we go. We have a proposal to look at. I'll share this with everybody. Um, if I can. There we go. I am not seeing share down at the bottom of this. Tim, do you want me to pull it up? Just a second. Let me see if I can get this here. Yeah, I am not showing sh the share uh, indicator down here. I don't think you have this document, do you? Um. Is it the 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 quote you included in the packet? I don't think that was included in the packet, was it? Um, this was sent to me Friday, so I didn't have a chance to put that well, in the packet. That's okay. I I have the the quote from Drexel Barrel. I'm happy to pull it up. Let me just find it real quick. Okay, I got it right here. Just a second. Can people see that? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. It took me some time to, I got too much stuff up on a little screen here. So anyway, um, we got a quote from our, uh, I guess this is going to be our, our, uh, our city uh, go-to surveyor. Is that correct, Jillian? Yes. Yeah. And um, I actually thought this was pretty good. I had a, Pretty good talk with uh, John Day at uh, Drexel Barrel. Um, he was sharp, understood what we were getting at, that we already had a survey, that we just needed it staked out so that we knew where the where the uh, lines were and where they came out of the water, out of the creek and stuff like that. So that's what he put together and that's what this is. And if you look at task 1.0, it talks about uh, how many feet apart are they gonna be the line of sights uh for for uh, stakes and stuff like that it all makes sense and so all we have to do and we can take the time to read through this in more detail if you want but that will be it that we'll be staking it so that there's uh, uh the survey monuments are at 50 to 100 foot in intervals and of line of sight and same with the stakes um and we will by doing so, be able to go in and begin doing our work on that. And we will also know whether or not we're encroaching on anybody else's property um, at the edge of the creek. Mm. So he said he can get that done in a couple of weeks. I would like to hear a uh, uh, motion to vote on this. It's $1,780, which doesn't seem outlandish. Uh, for a surveyor just to show up is probably a thousand bucks. So, um, can I hear a, a, a motion to accept this? And uh, I'll them? make the motion to accept sure, the bid by DBC contractors for the survey of Becker's Lane property. One thousand seven hundred eighty dollars. Okay, um, do we have a second on that? Second. Okay, all those in favor, raise your hand. I'm not sure I'm seeing everybody here. <coughs> I show me, Judy, um, I Rob, think if you and Nancy. Stop sharing your screen, you can see all of us. Where is TJ? Oh. I'm right stop here. Start. I haven't left yet. There you go. Okay, you haven't gone away, good. Okay. Um, I'm voting aye. Where's Cheryl? Can I'm I'm here. I'm kind of on top of somebody else on my little cell phone. And <laughs> okay, do you vote in favor? I'm voting in favor. Okay. <laughs> on my hands uh, up. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, uh, unanimous vote of the members here to approve this, and I'll uh, I'll get hold of. Uh, uh, John Day, the surveyor, and, and we'll move forward on this. 
The great thing about that is, and I'll go back to this task list now, and... Can you stop screen sharing? I would like to screen share on what I just put over there. Can you see that or does it work that way? No. No, you still, you still see the other thing. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, screen sharing is stopped. And now I'm going to screen share again and pull this up. And this is just something that I put together. You know, we were talking about what has, has to happen when. Um, so we have done the, uh, so you can see this and you can see my cursor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we've done the CSU land inspection, the Arborist report um, that Matthew did. We now have the surveying that we've just voted on. And we'll move forward on that. I'll get a fixed date from him to schedule this. Then the next thing to do is schedule the fence removal and the deadwood removal that uh, Matthew was talking about. So um, I don't know which one of those comes first. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, Matthew may, they may have to uh, um, uh, tape off the trail or the uh, property and the walkway in order to do their work, in which case we want to re remove the fence first. Um, if they don't have to do that, we might re remove the fence second, doesn't matter. Um, we need Matthew to tell us that. And then we can, then we can uh, um, get both uh, item number four, fence removal, and item number five, deadwood removal ready to go we also have another item here which is to decide on i guess we need to decide on whether we're doing uh the ada trail and if that impacts uh the the frisbee um the frisbee course but we can certainly do the the deadwood removal and the fence removal and get that scheduled uh pretty quick so I will get the the uh, the schedule date for the surveying and pass that along to Jillian and Jillian can get the items four and five uh, scheduled and on the books. It sounds like we need to get that on the books as soon as possible to get it done this summer. Does any of that make any sense? Yeah. Tim, I think we do need to switch four and five. We want to keep the fence up while they're doing the hazard tree pruning, just to have a physical barrier in between folks who might be on the trail and the work site. And I'm not sure if Matthew's still on the call, but that was something we discussed when we when we first talked about the fence removal. So just swap four and five. Matthew, do I have that right? Yes, that's. Uh, I would like the fence to stay until we get the tree work done there's a lot okay. of big dead with those trees and it was coming yeah, up on the my agenda concern, Matthew, was that the trees are going to come down they're going to tear that fence up and make removing it a, a bigger pain in the butt than it already is and i'm i was thinking that you may have to legally um uh barricade off that uh that walkway anyway while you're doing your work so think about that. It's just, it's up to you, however you want to do your work. We'll, we'll do it that way. But um, yeah, I, I, I think you may have to barricade that whole part off for the three or four days that you're doing your work. Uh, were you, did you want to say something, uh, uh, TJ? No, okay. No, it's not really. It's just uh, what you're saying is opposite of all the advice that we've gotten before on that fence. So I think I, we should just probably just leave it up to city staff to decide when that needs to come down. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Moving right along here. Yeah, hey, that's great. I'm really glad to see us uh, uh, making some mo movement on that. And uh, Matthew, you say it's going to be uh, summertime before we get around to that, right? 
Um, my plan is May. Okay. Because April we'll be planting a, a whole lot of trees, but May we should have some freedom to get to that. Okay. Um, so Judy, you and I have a action item to get some information from, from the ADA and figure out if we can do this in, concurrently with the um with the frisbee golf. That's a great idea. I, I have one question on this um, disc golf. Uh, is it in our purview to have a disc golf on open space land? Or is that really a park? That's a pair of thing. You're right. And 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 again, I, I think it's in our um, packet here about whether we want to turn this property over to the parks. Um, but uh, again, I agree with TJ back when, when you said, and, and I agree, we don't want to be buying up open space property and then just turning it over to the parks. Um, I mean, I would be happy if we can do disc golf on open space and we can still do that. I would be all for that. I'm just wondering if there's a little bit of finagling there. I don't know, Nancy. Do you have an answer? I think. To that? Well, I, I'm not sure. I have an answer. I think you know, Robin's question is is a good one. Um, and and as far as turning it over to pair of, I think you know, we do, we don't. I guess we are setting a precedent, but we don't want to set a precedent a precedent in doing exactly what you're talking about, buying little pieces of property and turning it over to parks. This was a really exceptional situation i think um you know we knew about the property uh parab knew about the property too but they had no funds to buy it and and but everybody agreed we didn't want to lose it and so we bought it i think osac does not want to be in the business of maintaining this piece of property right. um whether it's ada acceptable and or uh has a frisbee a golf course on it Personally, I'd be happy to turn it over to parks. Um, it's much more their purview, much more their bailiwick. Um, we've got plenty of open space property to manage and maintain. And this is much more of a park-like space. And, um, you know, we all through the post plan, we have uh, different places where we're, we, we need to cooperate with um, parks. And, and with Parab. And this is one of those places where I think we can do it really effectively. Um, you know, we bought and paid for the property. Um, and now if they were to take over the maintenance of the property, which, you know, would be a, a cost to us annually, um, I'd be willing to turn it over to them if they were to become responsible for it and, and uh, maintain it. That's just my two cents. Obviously, we'd We'd all have to agree to that, but I don't think we want to be in the business of maintaining park space like that. Um, and I think the city knows how to do it better than we do and power up, pair up. It's been what they've been doing for years. That's all. Okay. Yeah, we just have to be cautious not to uh, get caught up in, in doing this as a matter of course. So it's a special right. situation. It's not something that we're going to do. Um, with every pocket park in the city, so no. Um, I think that is something we need to vote on. But uh... I I say we put that off um, for yeah. everyone to think about it and and to to move along and and let's uh, vote on it at, at another time. Okay. Well, in the city and and Tara may not want it. <laughs> We haven't we haven't even asked them if we if they would take it if we gave it to them so yeah we need to uh, we need to find that out too. Well, in view of that, what Nancy just said, if we get Panu on with us next month, would it be kind of a good idea to give her heads up so she knows what to what to think about about this part sure. as well? I mean, you know, we got a twofer in here. I think that's a good idea, Judith. Yeah. 
<laughs> we gotta do something about this, Judith. This bed. <laughs> oh, sorry. Judy. Okay. No, it says Judith, you know, I didn't write that. My husband did, you know. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, is is because this would be, ha be something Parab has to vote on as a whole, and we would have to vote on as a whole. Um, it might not be a bad idea to have a joint meeting sometime with both with both groups, you know, to get to know who's on Parab. Um, it's not just Danu. There's some other dynamic people on that committee, and and uh, you know, get together and have a meeting, all, both both groups, and talk those two specific issues, which is plenty to talk about. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to throw this in there very quickly. So I'm meeting with Danu tomorrow to work on the agenda. Uh, Parab's okay. meeting on April 1st. So it might be beneficial to have an OSAC representative at the upcoming Parab meeting uh -huh. just to put all of this out there, perhaps, and maybe work with Parab to schedule a joint meeting. But they're, they're meeting next Monday, if that would be convenient for someone to attend and talk about a few of these items. Let me take a look. Um, yeah, six o'clock. Is it a Zoom meeting? It is. Yep. Just like this. Okay. I can be there. And it's a public okay. meeting, so anybody else from uh, OSAC that wants to be there can be there. Okay. Jillian, can you send us all uh, the Zoom meeting link? Yeah, I can send it out. Thank you. That's the day of the Women's Club auction. You all have to um, okay, moving on to Bill Bauer Park. Uh, let's see. Uh, we uh, we have a uh, meeting set up on uh, four seventeen. Is that right? Um, with yes. uh, Remfi, Matthew, and um, a couple of us from uh, from Manitou Springs, and that's so that Matthew and Remfi can get together and say, "This is what we need to clear." in order to be ready to uh, do the alignment. Uh, just recall that uh, Carl, uh, Carl Woody at Remfi had said that we needed to clear out some of the debris there in order to be able to, for him to do the alignment, for Remfi to do the alignment. And Matthew has said, and I agree with him, that we don't wanna destroy that uh, the, the foliage um, any more than we have to to accommodate the uh, the alignment. So we've got kind of a chicken and egg thing and we're getting, so we're getting Renfi and, and um, our arborists together to go down in there and see if we can come up with a plan on what we do need to remove. When is this? Pardon me? When, when is this? This is uh, um, the 17th, oh, April 17th. April? Mm -hmm. Um, if you decide that you want to come down there, coordinate with me, because if we get more than uh, two members down there, then we have to post this as a, yeah. Do you know as a meeting, time? which probably wouldn't attract a lot of attention, but you never know. So uh, the other thing is, uh, Jillian, we still have to figure out a way or get a uh, um, um, release of liability mm -hmm. to Mr. Baraha down there at the far end of those properties. I've talked to him. He's the guy that owns the property. If you go all the way down to the bottom of the uh, Bill Bauer Trail, down there where uh, it meets uh, Crystal Hills Boulevard, there's that piece of property right under the bridge, right right just south of the bridge that has a, has a gate on it. Um, there's a gentleman that owns that. Uh, um Bob Baraha and he has agreed to let us in there <laughs> with vehicles so that we can go in there and you can drive quite a ways back um to, to where it gets really into the canyon so that we have trucks back there to take out the deadwood and stuff like that 
and he's he's a, agreed to let us do that. But he wants a release of liability from the city. Okay. So you're working on that already, aren't you, Julian? Yeah, I'm working on that. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> Moving right along. I think that's all we've got on uh, on um, Bill Bauer. And next is Black Canyon Open Space. And Jillian, I'll let, I'll let you talk a little bit about the uh, status meeting we had in the uh, in the upcoming meeting that you're going to have this week. Are you ready for that? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I am now, Tim. So. <laughs> This is this is what I recollect from our last meeting. So we're waiting to hear a status update from the city of Colorado Springs on their acquisition of the West Side LLC property, which essentially is the property we would need to have an adequate entrance to our parcel of Black Canyon open space. Um, so Denise has ch is checking in currently with uh, Britt Haley, who's the Parks and Rec director with Colorado Springs on where they are in that process. Um, Tim, what else was there? Because I think that was the main thing. That we can't was, really was the main do anything until it. we find out about that. Yeah, we're uh, we're not quite as far along as uh, I, I I had thought we were, and what I believe De Denise thought we were. I think she thought we had a contract on, uh, or the, a lock on the West Side LLC property. Um, it's a little unclear whether that's the case or not. Um, and of course, unless, uh, unless the St the shuck company is on board, we're just spinning our wheels anyway. So, so that's moving again and hopefully we'll get good news from, from that meeting. Um, you're going to that meeting, aren't you? Uh, uh, Jillian? Yeah, and that's, that's the, on April 3rd, we're meeting with the the tops folks from Colorado Springs. Oh, I'm sorry. That's on April 3rd. It's the arborist yeah. one in, uh, in Bill Bauer <laughs> Park that's on the 17th. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah. So keep your fingers crossed. If that turns out to be just, uh, yeah, we need that to happen. Okay. Um, anybody want to say anything else on Black Cat? Cat? Canyon open space. Going, going, going. Okay. Um, Nancy, did you want to do your 15 minutes on? Uh, no. <laughs> I will say well, one thing about Black Canyon open space. You know, there's been quite a bit of social media chatter about it. And I think oh, yeah. I, I sent it to you, Tim. Yeah. Um, just just people saying yeah i just i just on facebook say oh i just hike the black canyon open space everybody you should come and see it it's beautiful uh, all that right. it's, got, it's real motivation to uh and and people debating about how to get into the property and that kind of thing so yeah. but, what they don't realize is there is no way into the property right without trespassing <laughs> so, right now yeah that they're trespassing so no, yeah the sooner the better that's all and i know we're I know. I, I was going to wait until after this uh, meeting on the third to say <laughs> to get on social media and say anything about that. So, oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Who's Kim Lee Horn? Sorry. Who is Kim Lee Horn? Kim Lee Horn is yeah. Let's talk about Kim Lee Horn a little bit. Um, Kim Lee Horn is the organization that uh, Nancy and I talked to up at the. Um, Oh, what what is it? The open Colorado Space. Open Space Alliance. Oh, so, yeah. Alliance. The Open Space Alliance. We were impressed with them. Jillian and I have talked with them since. Um, there was a little bit of an issue about whether or not uh, there was a little bit of an issue about Kimley Horn as a company because we had a trouble with a couple of the contractors that worked on some engineering. But the people we're talking to are completely separate from that, and they have thus far only been responsive and and uh helpful and to the point where they where um uh steve meyer has said steve meyer who runs their trail design uh business 
they have sub businesses within Kimberly Horn, and it's very separate. Uh, said that he would be happy to do the first phase of the what he calls the let's see the the vision plan, which is effectively a um, cut down master plan. Uh, you know that doesn't include all the historic and geographic background, but through his experience, which is pretty substantial, meets all of the um, check marks we have to make in order to go for a GOCO grant or any other state money. So um, he said that he's willing to do, he, he's, he's scoped that as a three-phase process all the way up through the alignment, but he said he's willing to do the first phase for $4,500, turn that over to the city, and not charge a thing until after the city is satisfied with it. So they're really going the extra mile to uh, to make themselves available to us and to market to us. And I, I I appreciate that. And they're ready to come in anytime and give us a, uh, a capabilities briefing and tell us what they're all about. And, and so we'll see where this talk with uh, the city of Colorado Springs go. If the city of Colorado Springs does have a, a real contract on uh, on the Westside LLC property, then we're ready to charge ahead. Um, if not, then we're we're back a lot days. So that's who Kim Lee Horn is. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, Existing trail maintenance, uh, we're lined up, we being uh, uh, Jillian and I on 411, right? Yeah, to go in and hike uh, uh, Iron Mountain to show um, Elizabeth. What's Elizabeth's last name? Barber. Barber, Elizabeth Barber, who is the designer from Remfi or the uh, manager from Remfi, who's going to be overseeing the work that we want them to do on Iron Mountain, where the big washout is. Um, if you weren't around, um, we're, we're using our $20,000 to pay to get that washout taken care of, because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's becoming a very obvious and unseemly issue. And we don't want that giving out on anybody. And it's, it's a little bit of an issue for the bikers um even now so anyway we're using our twenty thousand dollars for this year to take care of uh that problem um we've walked that with uh carl woody and we'll walk it again with elizabeth barber on the uh third and, mm -hmm. and hopefully my knee will be okay and i'll be able to do that <laughs> are you saying on the third of April, Tim? On, third, third of no, April. that's on the <laughs> 11th, Tim. Dude, I'm sorry. Did I get that wrong again? First time you said the 11th, then you said the third. Just which is I'm, it? I'm sorry, it is the 11th. So. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, on the 11th, we got lots of stuff coming up. On the 11th, we'll hike. Uh, we'll go in. We'll talk a little bit to uh, Crystal Hills, uh, Crystal Park uh, homeowners community, because they're going to let us drive vehicles up there to uh, Oak Ridge Road so that they have an access so that they're not walking um, an hour and a half loop to get their people up there or to take materials up there. So, so uh, Crystal Park has been, has been so far um, expressed a willingness to let us do that because it, it serves them as well. And then we'll uh, we'll hike up to the the problem on Iron Mountain. We'll hike over Iron Mountain and up Red Mountain. And on the top of Red Mountain, I don't know how many of you have been up there. Um, there's an area right when you start heading up Red Mountain, right right when you start heading to the top of Red Mountain, that is very narrow and there's a long drop. It's not a sheer drop. It's not terribly frightening, but a person could step off of that. It's getting thinner and thinner. 
the trail up there. And it's not a simple fix because it's all rock. I mean, you could carve it out of the rock and that may be the right thing to do. Um, but then there's still a steep trail going up for the last uh, 100 feet or so to the top of Red Mountain. So we're, we're scoping the, the work on that. And this will be something we take up for next year with our with our rent fee money for next year. Let me see that happen. Question, uh, Tim? Yes. The other part of trail maintenance, the the um the uh, Gold Co Youth Corps grant that we got that right. will have mile high replacing steps on Iron Mountain, mm -hmm. right? Right. Where are we with that? Uh Julian so will do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, we just had a meeting with CJ from Mile High Youth Corps, the program coordinator here in the Springs. We're setting up a timeline for that project now. Uh, I think, I want to say I remember hearing July, but I had Brad attend that meeting. Uh, I couldn't go myself, so I'll need to review the notes, but we're moving forward with the timeline. Great. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep. And, and my, my comment... I keep picking at this is that we really need somebody that knows what they're doing to oversee Mile High Youth Court for rebuilding those stairs. Because it's a it's a tricky piece of work. Okay. All right. And uh Steve Bremner, who is not here, is uh, on the hook one of these days to do a uh, on-site hike up Eagle Mountain. And we'll talk about that one of these days when he's here. Yeah. And we'll that's it. Um, anybody else got anything to say? Then we will adjourn the me meeting. And thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. Thanks. Good night, everybody. You All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you.